Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I wanna to share with you a new method to smoke ribs that I discovered a couple months ago, and it is phenomenal. Stick around, I'll show you everything. There is a big difference between competition barbecue and the barbecue you cook in your backyard. Okay, competition barbecue kind of assaults your taste buds. So for one bite, it tastes incredible, but then you kind of feel sick after you eat some of it. What we're doing for backyard barbecue is something you can make a meal out of and will delight your taste buds for the entire process. So our goal is to make the best meal out of these ribs that we possibly can. In this method, you'll notice that there's no brown sugar, there's no butter or margarine, parquet squeeze butter, there's no tiger sauce. These are not competition ribs, these are eating ribs. And if you enjoy eating ribs, these are gonna be the best kind of ribs you can eat. So to prepare these ribs, I keep things pretty simple. I take them out of the package, any little pieces of meat or fat that are hanging off, I trim those off. And because these are St. Louis cut ribs, you don't need to cut off the breastbone. You don't need to do a lot of work. That's why these are so easy. I'm looking for ease and delicious flavor. And St. Louis spare ribs are kind of the pinnacle of ease and flavor. They have more flavor than loin back ribs or baby back ribs, they're sometimes called, because they have more fat, more connective tissue, and they're gonna be juicier and just kind of more flavorful in general. But they're already cut the way you want it to go on the smoker because they're St. Louis cut. They're not a full spare. So all you have to do is remove them from the package, cut off little pieces of meat that are hanging off, and then for the membrane on the backside, a lot of people will remove that membrane, but what I like to do is I score the membrane. It's much easier, it's faster, and you get equally good results. Next, when it comes to seasoning, I like to keep it simple because I want the flavor of the pork to shine through. If you add too many seasons to the outside, you lose the flavor of the pork underneath, in my opinion, because pork is a more delicate flavor than something like, say, beef. Beef can take more seasoning than pork can. So I just do salt and pepper for two reasons. Number one, I don't wanna cover up the flavor of the pork, and number two is I wanna leave plenty of surface area available for smoke flavor to get absorbed by the meat. If you cover the whole outside with rub, the smoke flavor isn't going to penetrate the same way it otherwise would. I'm smoking these ribs because I want to taste smoke. If I just want the flavor of the seasonings, well, I could put the seasonings on it and cook these in the oven. I'm smoking them because I love smoke flavor, and to maximize that, we're going to use a simple seasoning of just salt and pepper. If you want more flavor, I'm going to show you later how you can add it. We're gonna start these ribs off today at 225 degrees. I want it to cook low enough and slow enough that I have enough time to get smoke flavor on those ribs. If I did them at 300, there wouldn't be enough time to build in as much complex flavor as I want. So low and slow at 225 to start for the first four hours. Now, a lot of you have heard of the three, two, one method for ribs, which means you put them on the smoker for three hours, then you wrap them for two hours, then you put them back on and glaze them for the last hour. Don't do that. Okay, lots and lots of people have done that, and for very, very few people has that worked out well. The reason it doesn't work out well for a lot of people is because everyone has a different smoker. And a lot of times, the ribs will overcook before they're ready to be taken off. To be fair, there are lots of people who've done the 3 2, one method and loved it. I'm not trying to trash the 3 2, one method. I just know, in my experience, trying to help people learn how to make great ribs, the 3 2, one method almost never works. Because there's often something to be gained by changing that method to get more smoke flavor in there and just have a more succulent rib at the end. So the first four hours at 225 are just to build smoke flavor, and then we're gonna go 275 for one hour, still unwrapped. So what I want is meat to pull back on the bone because those proteins are gonna coagulate and shrink up, and that way each bite that you take off of the rib is gonna be meatier than if the ribs just kinda lie flat the entire time. So if you don't know what protein coagulation is, the easiest way to think about it is those proteins in those muscle fibers are gonna shrink and tighten, which has the effect of making the meat pull in off of the bone so that you have a bigger, plumper piece of meat on the bone, and that way each bite has more meat in it. So to recap, the first four hours are to build smoke flavor, which is the whole reason you're barbecuing in the first place. The fifth hour is to get the proteins to shrink and coagulate because I want a meatier bite of rib at the end. And then finally, we're gonna wrap it. And the way we're gonna wrap it is gonna be a little special. We'll show you when we get there. As people who spend hours and hours and hours trying to make great barbecue, I know that quality, craftsmanship, and artisanry are all important to us because we value a great product. And that's why I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Made In. Made In Cookware is professional quality because they use the finest quality materials and they work with renowned craftsmen from around the world. In addition, it has a lifetime guarantee so you know that it's built to last. And there's a reason it has over 32,000 five-star reviews. Now, I wanna tell you about my experience with Made In products. First, the nonstick pan is the best nonstick pan I have ever used, and it's not even close. I've used quite a few because they're just so darn convenient. This one is far and away the best. It is the best egg cooking pan I have ever used, and I eat a lot of eggs, so this is tremendously helpful to me. Then also, 
the carbon steel pan, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it has replaced my cast iron pan because it sears better, it's lighter, and with the long handle, it's way more convenient to use, especially if you use it like I do, outside, on the grill, the long handle keeps your hands from burning. Right now, Made In is offering my viewers 15% off your first order with promo code MAD. This is the best discount available anywhere online for Made In products. Just go to madeincookware.com forward slash MAD and use promo code MAD for 15% off your first order. That's madeincookware.com forward slash MAD, use promo code MAD. And I'm just gonna warn you, once you get on the website, you're gonna spend an hour there looking at all the amazing stuff that they have. I know that's what I did. I'm guessing you're gonna do the same thing too. So be sure to check it out. Now that the ribs are on, it's time for our secret weapon, pork lard. I'm not just gonna be adding pork lard, we're gonna be smoking it first, so we're adding smoked pork lard. All right, so the process is really simple for this. I have a tablespoon, I have the pork lard, and I have an aluminum foil pan. So I'm gonna take two heaping tablespoons of pork lard per rack of ribs. I have three racks of ribs, so it's gonna be six heaping tablespoons of pork lard that I put in here. I'm gonna put it on the smoker for the entire time that the ribs are cooking so it can build up really good smoke flavor. Going in with this lard, and it's not gonna to be touched until it's time to wrap the ribs. It's right at about the three hour mark at this point, and it's time to start spraying. And to answer the first question, I'm using 50-50 apple cider vinegar and water. I use the apple cider vinegar because I think it has a good flavor, and then it also has a low pH to soften up anything on the outside that might start to get crusty. Then I add the water just because it makes the apple cider vinegar go a little bit further. Now, what I'm looking for when it's time to spray is first, good color, because that's gonna be a proxy for good smoke flavor. So when it's a nice, dark, deep red color, that tells me that's got smoke on it, that's gonna taste really good. And then also, I'm looking for when the outside starts to dry out a little bit. And when that happens, I know it's time to spray. So it's gone three hours at 225 degrees, and I'm gonna start spraying for the last hour or so of that, and then I'm gonna bump the temperature up to 275. We're gonna try to get some pullback on the bone. But let's take a look at these ribs and see if they're ready. starting to get good red color, but I still want a little bit more. But I see the outside is starting to dry out, so that's why I'm gonna spray. So for the next hour or so, I'm gonna spray about every 15 minutes. So it looks like this. We're gonna go one more hour at 225 because we're going after that smoke flavor that only barbecue gives you. If anybody tells you that they can make great ribs in the crock pot, you tell them that they've never had real barbecue ribs. Okay, so we're building in that smoke flavor. In about an hour, we're gonna come back and check on those. If we have the color that we want, then it's time to bump up the temperature to get that pullback on the bone. We want all those to be nice and plump ribs that we're gonna serve at the end. It's been four hours at this point and it's time to bump up the temperature to 275 for two reasons. First, I wanna get meat pull back on the bone for reasons I mentioned earlier. Sometimes it doesn't happen, usually this works though. But the second reason is I wanna render the fat really well and at a higher temperature, you render the fat better. So I'm gonna take these ribs, I'm gonna move them a little closer to the fire and add more wood so that I'm cooking at 275 for the next hour and I'm still adding smoke flavor but mainly I'm focusing on getting the pull back on the bones and rendering fat. All right, it's been another hour and it is coming to the time to wrap. We've been spraying about every 20 minutes. So at this point, we're trying to get some pullback on the bones, we're trying to render fat. If it doesn't get a good pullback on the bones, it's not the end of the world, it's not a big deal really at all. It just kind of plumps up each bite of meat. And the reason that it pulls back and sometimes it doesn't pull back has to do with collagen and connective tissues. So as you increase the temperature of the meat, that collagen starts to hydrolyze or break down and form gelatin. So if you're breaking down the connective tissues before you up the temperature, sometimes you don't get the pullback. But really, it's not a big deal. We're mainly about flavor and texture here. So with flavor and texture, I realized that I was wrapping in a way that wasn't as good as an experiment that I tried. So my philosophy always is, try a bunch of new stuff. If something works, adopt that method. And that's exactly what I've done here today. For those of you who aren't really familiar with collagen, 
it is the reason why slow cooking is so special. Because when you cook slowly, you start to hydrolyze the collagen. So if you imagine three springs that are stuck together, of course they're springy and they're tough, and that's why barbecue meats are tough if you cook them with direct heat and you cook them quickly. But over a long time, that collagen hydrolyzes or breaks down into its constituent amino acids and forms gelatin, which gives barbecue that amazing texture that's so hard to find in great food. The reason I'm using lard is because, well, if you've heard me say it once, you've heard me say it a million times, what you perceive as moisture is usually rendered fat. So my illustration is always uh, a crock pot where a roast has been sitting in there all day. It's surrounded by water. There's tons of water in there, but you take a bite of the meat and it's dry. That's because it's surrounded by water rather than rendered fat. You can think about how slippery fat is. That's gonna be what you perceive as moisture in your mouth. So if you get oil on your hands, everything's slippery and sliding around, you kind of want some of that rendered fat when you take a bite of barbecue because it lubricates everything and gives you the feeling of moisture. So the lard helps with that. Also, smoking the lard is a game changer too, just like smoking tallow because there are hydrophilic compounds and there are hydrophobic compounds. Hydrophilic compounds are the compounds that would dissolve in water. So the meat that's exposed on your barbecue, that's gonna dissolve those hydrophilic compounds. Hydrophobic compounds get dissolved by fat. So by putting this lard in there, I'm getting a whole spectrum of smoke flavors that I otherwise wouldn't be able to get on the meat. So now I have a broad range of smoke flavor instead of kind of a narrow band that's only absorbed by the meat. Plus the added moisture makes this the way to cook ribs. There's a deer in the backyard here. I think it's just mocking us. So taking a look at these ribs, I see some pullback on the bones, not as much as I would like, but that's okay. Great color on the outside, and this fat is rendered really, really well. So all that is good stuff. I'm gonna add some of the smoked tallow, and then I'm gonna roll this up in the butcher paper, put it back on to get tender. At this point, we're talking maybe 30 minutes, not long at all. I'm gonna put it back on, meat side down. To test for doneness on these ribs, there are two ways that I can tell. The first is you pick them up and it feels like they want to give way. That's a good sign that these ribs are done, they're ready to take off. And if you're not comfortable just going based on feel, you can quickly unwrap the ribs and grab your digital instant read thermometer. And I use the Thermapen, it's the best on the market. Trust me, I spent more money on other cheaper brands that broke than on one thermopen. Anyway, you can take it, you can poke it in, and when it feels like butter, that's when you know it's done. Usually that's at a temperature around 207, 208, a little bit higher than brisket. It's been 30 minutes, let's see how these feel. Oh, yeah. So for me, these ribs are perfect exactly as they are. They need nothing else. I will go and make a meal out of those and be supremely happy. But for those of you who like sauce, you wanna dial up the flavor, now's the time to do it. Because we used a simple rub, we have lots of smoke flavor. We have a full spectrum of smoke flavor between the smoke that was absorbed by the meat and the lard. So it's juicy, it's gonna be amazing. But to dial up the flavor, you have the smoke underneath and now use whatever your favorite sauce is and we're gonna glaze these. I'll show you exactly how. First step, get your favorite sauce. If you make it yourself, even better. Next step, get some vinegar. You can use apple cider vinegar or distilled vinegar. It doesn't really matter too much. What we're trying to do is reduce the thickness of the sauce so it isn't gloopy when we put it on the ribs. Mix it up. Now all you have to do is put it back on the smoker till it gets sticky. So I'm gonna taste the ones that I made the way I like and that's with no sauce. So this is exactly what I want in a rib. 
Lots of smoke flavor on the outside. Simple seasoning, salt and pepper. A little bit of pullback on the bone and nice and juicy because we've rendered that fat and we hydrolyzed that connective tissue. This is gonna be good. Let's try it out. Man, does not get better than that. Wow. So if you wanna see, I have a clean bite, clean bone underneath. That's exactly the level of doneness that you want. So I am really happy about these. Now, you guys, please try it yourself. If you wanna glaze them, glaze them. You should still have great smoke flavor underneath. You should have everything you want in barbecue. And you should be able to knock the socks off of all of your neighbors who come to your backyard to have your barbecue. I make so much barbecue that it's rare that I eat a lot of my own barbecue. But I'm five ribs deep right now and showing no signs of stopping. I love these and I'm confident if you try it, you're gonna love them too. But good luck, keep smoking. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button down below. You can also subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content and you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time. Mmm, it's so good. I like sauce, but I mean, this doesn't need it. In case you're wondering, when you're done eating a rib, it should look like this. Man, I'm eating another one. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, so good. For two reasons, I want to get freaking fly, okay? Write it and we'll do it live. <laughs> what does that mean to play us out? To end the show? All right, go, go. <laughs> Here's some ribs. More? <laughs> you want more? No. More. <laughs> more. <laughs> no. Before she even swallows each bite, she wants more. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Smart baby.